It's ashwagandha, I'm not going to keep you guessing. And a brand new clinical study found no benefit on aerobic capacity, muscle oxygenation, and blood parameters in healthy men. Now, I don't take ashwagandha, but if you're taking it, the study doesn't necessarily mean that you should stop, as I'll explain in this video. Plus, at the end of the video, I'll share an alternative supplement that's got great evidence for boosting exercise performance. So ashwagandha, it's a plant that's been used for centuries in traditional Eastern medicine, and existing research points to potential benefits for exercise performance. But the researchers behind this new study wanted to examine improvements in aerobic capacity specifically, and they also wanted to explore the potential mechanisms behind any improvements. So let's see how the study was set up and what exactly they discovered. So the study included 41 non-athletic men, and they were placed into two groups. One took 600 milligrams of ashwagandha root extract daily, and the other one took a placebo. Now they all underwent eight weeks of high-intensity interval training using a rowing machine for their workouts. To check the effects of ashwagandha, they measured VO2 max. They also checked the participants' blood though, because it's been proposed that ashwagandha can improve aerobic capacity by boosting the blood's capacity to carry oxygen. Now these tests were done before the study started, then again at the eight-week mark after they'd done eight weeks of high-intensity exercise. So what did the researchers discover? Well, first, if we have a look at measures of exercise performance, there was no statistically significant differences between the two groups, and VO2 max was the key metric. But they also checked things like maximum aerobic power and power at anaerobic thresholds, and none of the metrics showed statistically significant impacts for the ashwagandha supplements. But what about when it came to measures of the participants' blood? Well, here they examined 15 distinct metrics, and as with the markers of performance, however, there were no statistically significant differences between the two groups. So the conclusion for these authors was clear. Ashwagandha supplementation didn't seem to boost gains from training when it comes to aerobic capacity. The eight weeks of high intensity interval training using the rowing machines, that was quite effective. But they were effective at about the same degree for both the supplement and the placebo groups. And there were no important differences in terms of blood metrics. So is it time to stop taking ashwagandha supplements? Well, not necessarily. Because we need to place this recent study within the broader context of research on ashwagandha. Because that paints a very different picture. So one of the first studies that looked at ashwagandha's impact on athletic performance was published way back in 2010. And after eight weeks of taking an ashwagandha supplement, those researchers found a statistically significant change. There, the VO2 max rose by nearly 7%, and they also saw gains in maximum sprinting speed and in measures of muscle power for the participants' legs. Now, while that's an impressive result, the numbers in that study were tiny, so it involved just 10 participants in each group. But later meta-analyses combined the studies to give us a broader picture of the impact. So one was published in 2020, and it focused on VO2 max. It pulled the results from four studies, and it showed that ashwagandha supplements did significantly improve that metric in health adults and athletes, and another meta-analysis came out in 2021. It concluded that the impact of ashwagandha supplements on cardiorespiratory fitness was very large, and they looked specifically again at VO2 max, and the pooled effect size for the included studies was almost 2, so that indicates a pronounced impact. So what should we do about this new study that found no benefits for ashwagandha? Why is there a mismatch between both of those meta-analyses and this new study? Well, the problem, it turns out, is that there are significant concerns about the quality of data from those early meta-analyses. So consider that 2020 analysis. It ended up including only five small studies in the calculations. Only one measured VO2 max directly. The others relied upon indirect measures, which aren't as reliable, and the heterogeneity was high. So that just means that the effect differed a lot between the studies, which makes the pooled results less certain. And on top of all of that, the evidence quality was rated as low. So overall, when we examined the evidence linking ashwagandha and metrics related to athletic performance, some themes emerge. So existing studies are generally small and often are poor quality and the results have been mixed. So the authors of the study that we began the video with note those two issues within their own research. But for me, with this new study that's of higher quality, that one didn't show any benefit. So for me, I would err towards caution. I don't think that ashwagandha clearly demonstrates an effect for athletic performance. But there is a potential benefit of ashwagandha in a completely different area, which many of us struggle with, and the evidence for it looks stronger. To understand this other benefit, we need to talk about some of the other ways that ashwagandha impacts our bodies. So ashwagandha, it appears to have an effect on the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal or HPA axis. 
So this is the body's stress response system. Think of it as a three-step chain reaction that kicks in whenever we face a challenge or a threat. So the hypothalamus is in the brain and it senses stress and it initiates a pathway that ends up in signaling to our adrenal glands to release cortisol and adrenaline. Some smaller studies have indicated that ashwagandha may help to lower cortisol levels. So in essence, it turns down the volume on the stress response. So that raises a natural question. Does ashwagandha help to bring relief to those suffering from stress and anxiety? Well, one study published in 2009 compared two groups of adults with moderate to severe anxiety. One group got traditional psychotherapy and they also used relaxation breathing exercises and took a placebo. The other group took 300 milligrams of ashwagandha as well as those breathing exercises. And by the end of the eight weeks, there was a big difference between the groups. So scores on a clinical measure of anxiety dropped by 30.5% in the traditional care group, but they fell by an impressive 56.5% in the ashwagandha group. More recent studies have also revealed positive impacts, and a meta-analysis published in 2024 pulled together data from nine randomized controlled trials, so there was a significant positive effect of ashwagandha on perceived stress, anxiety, and cortisol levels in the blood. So for some patients that I see at the clinic who suffer with anxiety and they don't want to go onto a medication and instead they want to try a supplement, I explain to them the ashwagandha research as well as the potential limitations. And if they opt to try ashwagandha, I encourage them to select a brand that ConsumerLab.com have tested, especially because many of the ashwagandha brands, they fail to pass rigorous testing due to low levels of the key active compound. So only 5 out of the 13 products that ConsumerLab.com tested were approved. But returning to athletic performance, I want to end this video by highlighting a supplement that we've got much stronger evidence of a beneficial effect, and that supplement is creatine, and I'm sure you already know about its muscle performance effects, but it's the brain benefits that I want to highlight here. So the research on brain health even convinced my grandma to start taking it. So let me explain what we've been finding out. Our brains need a lot of energy to function correctly, and creatine, which we get from foods like red meat and seafood, helps to produce this energy quickly and it supports critical brain processes like memory and thinking. It acts like a backup battery system that can instantly deliver energy when demand spikes. And research has shown that creatine supplements can increase the amount of creatine in the brain, but does that help with brain performance? Well, a meta-analysis was published in 2022 to assess the existing research, and the main analysis showed that creatine supplementation improved memory performance compared to a placebo, and the effect was particularly strong in older adults. So when I told my grandma about the study, she was very intrigued and wanted to start taking creatine. But we've got an even more recent meta-analysis that included 16 trials, and it was published last year. So it once again found that creatine supplementation had a significant positive impact on memory. It also improved attention attention time and sped up processing. It also had one other intriguing finding. So subgroup analyses showed that creatine supplements were particularly beneficial for females. So I'll highlight that because I've spoken to many of my female patients who think that creatine is just a supplement for men. But the research clearly indicates that it can be a useful supplement for women as well. So I take creatine as part of my supplement called Microvitamin Plus Powder. But just because I take a supplement does not in any way mean that you should as well. But aside from supplements, there are also critical questions about the best forms of exercise to maximize our muscle performance. So recently, Zone 2 training has been getting a lot of attention. But does the evidence support it? We'll make sure to check out this next video here to see what the latest research tells us.